Welcome to the weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. Um, this episode's going to be great. We've got some really delicious beers we're going to try out. we got some really fun and interesting things we're going to talk about this week. And, well, if you're new to this show, and if you're new to my channel, we do this every Sunday. It's called the Weekly Beer and Video Review Show with Danny Soleil. That's me. <laughs> Sorry, I was laughing at something that's going on behind me. And, um, well... If you're, uh, if you're a little un unfamiliar with this particular live stream, what we do here is we talk about the videos that came out last week on the Travel Man Dan Show. And then we talk about the videos that are coming up this week on the Food Friday Show and the Travel Man Dan Show. And in between, we talk about, well, anything that comes up, anything that happens during the week, whether it's uh, significant on the news or whether it pops up into my mind when I'm driving around. Uh, we just kind of make fun of it. I bring you this day in history where we talk about um, six things that were great and uh, will happen here in, uh, in Earth in, uh, on this day being uh, March 8th today. And then we go ahead and we talk about what are you reading, what are you watching. That's a really self-explanatory thing. And that is basically we talk about <clears throat> what you're reading and what you're watching. And then we close out the show with a quote for the week. So thanks a lot for joining me. Guys, if you're watching this live, shoot me a comment anytime. I'll always respond to you. I appreciate it. Without you guys, I'm nothing. So thank you so much for joining me here. And we catch you on the replay. You can also drop me a comment on any one of the topics that we discuss, especially the beer, if you've ever tried it, or if you can suggest a beer that I might want to try. Put it down in the comments below. I'll try to get at it. I'll respond to you. All that good stuff. Thanks a lot. And let this show begin. Here we go. Let's get started with the first beer. The first beer I'm really excited about because it is a brewing company that I'm a little familiar with. Um, I can't remember the last. I can't remember the name of the other beer that I tried. We didn't do it here, but I've had it before just because they have a distinct label. But this is a really good one. This is a really delicious one, I think. And uh, without further ado, let's bring it on up. Guys, I'm talking about Flying Dog brings in the cookies and cream stout. Okay, check that out. Um, it's like an old tape. Uh, who remembers the mixtape days of the 80s? <laughs> I remember KISS 98.5, you stay up the top 10 at 10, and then you'd record each one, and um, those, uh, that's pretty fun. So that's a really cool label. Um, it is a stout, so it is a little bit thicker. It is made by Flying Dog, and they are out of, let me tell you where Flying Dog is out of. Um, <clears throat> excuse me a minute. Flying Dog, where are you from here? I'm trying to look to see where Flying Dog is from. Uh, doesn't say... I'm sure I can find it here. I should probably done a little research on it. It's Frederick, Maryland. All right. The great state of Maryland, where my old college roommate, Russell Fink, calls from. Uh, Russ, if you ever get a chance to watch this, what's up, Catfish? I miss you. Sorry I ate all your Pop-Tarts all those years. Um, I loved I couldn't have asked for a better roommate than you. Uh, we were both JUCO transfers, <laughs> and um, with the combination of Wooly, uh, we definitely had a good time those years, and, and thanks a lot. And uh, man, okay, from the great state of Maryland, we are going to try the Flying Dog Cookies and Cream. Whew, man, it's at 8.2%. Stouts are usually stronger. Um, they are more of a thicker and bold taste. We're going to go ahead and get into this, but one thing I really like about it is because i got a sweet tooth all the time. I'm a, I'm a, a candy eater, a cookie eater, a cake, waffles, anything with sugar, syrup. Uh, I definitely uh, am interested to try this cookies and cream stout. So, we got the red bottle opener. Let's crack this sucker right open. Get a whiff. Whew. Oh, yeah. All right. Yep, we're in it. We're in it. Okay, so... Uh, the brew house parties. <laughs> I'm trying to read their label. It's kind of a, a little bit difficult to read, but let's go ahead and give this cookies and cream by Flying Dog a good try here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is, ooh, delicious. All right. First sip, really tasty. It's got a thick, 
creamy, kind of milky taste to it. It's got a smooth, uh, no aftertaste, and boy, you taste right away. You taste that cookies and cream, and by drinking this uh, stout, you take in the flavor of like an Oreo, and first sip, amazing. Um, I know it's going to be pretty heavy. It's definitely strong at 8.2%, 8 8 so we're going to set that down for a minute, and let's start the show. The first thing I want to talk about, let's not even get, let's get right into it, guys. Did you guys happen to see UFC last night? Man, if you did, what an exciting fight. I'm talking about the Zhang Wei Li versus Joanna Jemcheko. Did I say that right? I hope I did. Um, those are two tough names to pronounce. Um, but wow, what a fight. What a fight. I mean, most epic women's fight ever. Um, these two women just sat in there and just started punching each other. Just, you know, um, there really wasn't that much ground and pound. There was just a lot of action for five rounds. Um, a couple of things we learned is uh, Zhang Wei Li is legit. She is phenomenal. Um, she's also my favorite fighter in the UFC. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of biased because, well, I, you know, I support her and, and I support, uh, I just want to see a Chinese champion do really good. I've always had, uh, you know, I, I want to see China do well in, in mixed martial arts and John Wei Li it's it's not even so much about China to be honest with you I just like the person that she is you know so uh congratulations to her what a fight I mean Joanna is there a tougher woman out there I mean she probably took two three hundred strikes to the head her frontal lobe right here I mean it just looked insane combined with her braids I don't know if you guys seen this before, after, whatever, but combined with her braids, she looked like something out of a science fiction. I mean, her her hematoma or whatever bruise on her forehead was getting bigger and bigger, and I don't know how she got through it. I, it really, Joanna, huge, huge props to her. I doubt if she's ever going to watch Weekly Beer and Video Review Show, but if she does, you know, I'm, I'm such a fan of just the UFC and all the fighters, what it takes to go through this, what it, to sign up to get punched and kicked in the face. I mean, we just sit there and watch it as like, you know, like a total true blood sport, but amazing guts, amazing courage, and uh, just an outstanding fight, an outstanding, uh, she was an outstanding champion of her, of her own right, and oh, man, the, the beating that she took, and the thing is, she, she got hit in the head, I want to say it was like middle of the first round or early second round, so she literally was getting punched there for three other rounds, and it was just unbelievable fight um even uh, john way lee got touched up a lot you know um and then just at the end to see her uh translator and his exhilaration of actually winning and you know he he f basically mumbled and fumbled the words and couldn't get out he was uh, it was it was pretty interesting because you know Knowing the Chinese people more than than a lot of people just because I live there, you know I always pull for them and things like this and um You know what had happened to her and and, and what's going on right now with the coronavirus starting in, in Hebei, Wuhan is um, you know that That supersedes anything, you know, you can be fighter or whatever But it's like the amount of pressure and struggle that she's gone through uh, They had to take her out of her home country where her home training is Bring her to Thailand, then they had to take her to Thailand, to Abu Dhabi, then they got to take her to the United States. And, you know, she's just barely learning English. And, um, you know, I'm sure her mind is on her country and our countrymen and women. And just this this horrible thing that's, you know, continues to spread now. I saw it this morning that's it hit New York State pretty hard. So, um, yeah, uh, without rambling on too much further away from that you know great fight Zhang Wei Li great champion Jayo and uh, <laughs> that means uh, well uh, you can figure it out but uh, yeah so really really good fight uh, the the main events the Israel Adesanya versus Roel Romero you know interesting fight uh, I thought Yoel would push the pace a little bit more but you know like I said I'm not a fighter. I don't get into the octagon. I don't armchair octagon. You know, it, it's very different when you're actually in there <laughs> and you're watching uh, rather than when you're watching it. It's easy to say boo hoo hoo, but they have strategies. And uh, the way UL's strategy was to slow things down for uh, Asanya, 
was much different uh, than uh, Adesanya's strategy to fight Romero, and they were basically just uh, what it looks like is offsetting. And to I guess to the casual person or, or just even fight fans, it was it was a strange fight. You know, who am I to judge? Uh, I, I won't do that because you know I'll get my clock cleaned by either of them. But uh, <laughs> but um, but interesting, great card all the way up and down. I like the um, Sean O'Malley fight. He's back. He's back. He's ready to whip some ass. He looked really really good. Really really sharp. And um, yeah, I was happy to see him back in the UFC. All right, let's go ahead back to this cookies and cream. So, Zhang Weili, he Pijo. Wow, really good, really nice. All right, you know how there's that like al taste that sometimes tastes sweet? Well, this is more like a cookie sweetness. This is like a pack of Oreos that are, you know, stuffed and, um, and double stuffed. And, and it's got a nice, creamy, milky flavor to it. Uh, it doesn't even taste like sometimes these oatmeal stouts and, 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 and chocolate stouts and things like that can be so heavy that you can only have half of them. But, uh, but not the case here. This one that's got a really good taste to it uh, the cookies and cream as well um uh, being represented well we'll say that and uh really delicious the 8.2 percent hasn't hit me yet i'm sure in about 30 minutes you're gonna hear me slurring and slobbering over my own words as i uh, tend to be a mumble mouth anyway so we'll see how this episode shapes up after the second beer but i want to talk about the video that came out last week if you're unfamiliar with it, and if you're not living here in the United States, I'll give you a little brief, uh, quick little summary about us and our fascination with crazy foods. We like to go ahead and take our fast food to another level by stacking up two, three, four, five, six patties at a time. I don't know. Um, we add things. We make them crazy. We we tend to try to think, uh, well, uh, Hawaii likes pineapples. Let's go ahead and throw pineapples on there. Let's put more bacon on there. Let's just make it more uh, saucier and just crazy stuff, right? So if you're in America, then you know, and you know about the phenomena. Last week's video was a Food Friday video where I went ahead and tried out KFC's Chicken Donut Sandwich or Donut Chicken Sandwich. I'm not sure what it actually is called, but I just know it is <laughs> a giant sandwich like this big and it and inside the chicken, right? KFC chicken. But instead of using a bun, they used two glazed donuts, and it was amazing. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Every bite was like biting into a, a sweet morning of uh, glazed donuts that got sticky all over your fingers. And then when you hit that salty and that spicy part of the chicken, they blend it so perfectly well together. Well, it's just something that you got to try out for yourself. So if you are here in the United States, you're probably close to a KFC. So pull in get either through the drive-thru or walk in and get yourself ready to go but just make sure that you have some um some wipes and if you're not well hopefully you'll be able to try it out one day and um it was suggested that you go into Krispy Kreme get uh two Krispy Kremes and then you go and you get a uh, chicken sam or just a chicken breast and you make it yourself so that's also an option, but if you just want to see what it looks like and, and, and kind of take in my excitement, uh, go ahead and check out last week's Food Friday video. It's up there right now on my channel. You can check it out and uh, tell me what you think, if you've had it, if you tried it, if you are thinking about it, uh, or if you didn't like it, just you know, go ahead and throw me a comment down below. Any of that stuff is well appreciated. And um, well, if you're as excited as I am about it, then you can go ahead and uh, just let me know about it. All right, very good. Now let's get back into the cookies and cream, the milk stout. Okay, so. Wow, I can't believe how, how delicious this is. This really is like tasting almost like, it kind of tastes like a fermented protein sh shake. You know how protein shakes are all crazy flavored? That's what it kind of tastes like, like a carbonated fermented protein shake of vanilla cookies and cream. So uh, really good tasting. Uh, Flying Dog makes another really good beer. I just I can't. It's on the tip of my tongue. But if you haven't checked out their product, you should. They're good stuff. This one's really strong. Um, yeah, we're, we're not bad. Not bad at all. We're going to go ahead and get back that, to that in a minute. Now I want to talk about... Um, 
This isn't the section where I talk about the, what are you watching. This is just a, a, a quick little add-on. Guys, I finally jumped into the party. I finally got on board. I'm a little late. I'll be honest, I'm a little late, in, in, especially for such a die-hard fan. Um, I, I'm surprised that it took me this long, but uh, hey, you know, with all the stuff out there to watch, who can get, who can get to it in time? Excuse me. I'm talking about Baby Yoda. I'm talking about the Mandalorian armor. I finally started watching it. I got through the first episode where, um, well, you you know what I'm talking about. But I never knew what a whole Baby Yoda thing was. I knew that it was from the Mandalorian armor. I'm a huge Star Wars diehard fan. Tons of toys everywhere. All the episodes I absolutely love. I even like Jar Jar Binks. And, um, yeah, I just haven't had the time to sit down and watch it. But I got into it a little bit uh, yesterday. And, whew, man, this is going to be good. Because right after I'm done here, I'm going to do some 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 little metadata on the, on the YouTube. And then I'm going to get right back into my big old chair. And I'm going to chill out and watch The Mandalorian. Because why the hell not? I'm excited. I'm pumped. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. If you liked it. <clears throat> if you're, you know, buying the, the Baby Yoda thing. If you're really excited about it. What? What I really liked about it was all the different creatures right just in one episode and all the action and stuff like that you saw well you saw the two couple of people in um in the, uh in the bar and i like the callbacks to the frozen and, and carbonite type stuff it's just a really well written kind of quick episode and uh and rather than being a as opposed to you know a two hour movie which is not not a problem there either i love the han solo movie but just really enjoying the mandalorian armor and uh looking forward to watching that some more <clears throat> all right so now let me get into another sip then i want to talk about the amazing day that i had yesterday oh man it was awesome so let's go ahead and try out this cookies and cream and uh Wow, I didn't think I'd be able to sip it down so quick, but it is gone. It is finished. You can see through the brown that I have drank it all. There's just a couple little bubbles at the bottom. Fantastic. Absolutely delicious. Really enjoyed this. Me and my buddy were just talking the other day, like how oatmeal stouts, how chocolate stouts, they're a little too heavy. They're a little, you know, I'm not, I'm not so into them because they're just so hard to get through. But not here, man. This cookies and cream is delicious. It's got a sweetness to it. It's got a milky, creamy, without that extra heavy flavor. It's got a nice buzz to it. I can already feel the 8.2% kicking in. Really well done here by the flying dog. And that's why I'm going to give it a solid 8. That's right. I'm going to give it a straight 8, right? Not bad. Almost coming close to the ceiling, but really delicious. Check it out. If you haven't tried it out, you should because... um. Well, it's tasty, it's delicious, and uh, Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Danny Soleil, or is it the other way around? I think it's the other way around. Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan, is approved. All right, <clears throat> which then, I guess, well, if you haven't tuned into last week's weekly beer and video review show with Danny Soleil, you wouldn't have known the news, and that's, uh, that's what I want to bring up right now, just as long as I'm talking about it. So I'm basically going to be, I'm doing it right now, um, and if you're unfamiliar with last week's episode, I talked about it, but I'm basically going to go ahead and rebrand my channel into being the Danny Soleil channel where you can watch the Travel Man Dan show, the Travel Man Dan show. <laughs> the beer is making me slur. What are you going to do? And um, then you can watch the Food Friday show. So you'll be able to watch all these great shows still. They're not going anywhere. It's just the channel will be changed to the Danny Soleil channel because I want to use my name. My name is the brand. My name as, a, as an actor, um, I want to get it out there more so that you know you just basically nobody can take that name from you. You are the Danny Soleil channel. And on there, uh, you, you have the Travel Man Dan show, the Food Friday show, the weekly beer and video review show. So... If, uh, if you go to my channel on a, you know, a regular basis, thank you. Thank you so much, really. That means everything to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just going through it and doing it, you know. If you don't, uh, well, you know, I appreciate it if you do. But regardless, it's going to be changed to the Danny Soleil channel. So now you know it. 
Um, when you see it, uh, don't worry, all the same shows, all me, I'll still be here, I'll still be pumping out videos. You're going to get two videos a week, and that's every other week you get the Travel Man Dan Show. Every other week you get a Food Friday episode, and then every week you get the weekly beer and video review show with me, Danny Sillet. There you go. Let's, yeah, let's, that, that's it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk about the next thing that I want to talk about, and that is what I did yesterday. Oh, man, I had the greatest time. So I was invited out to Bakersfield, well, it's actually in McFarland, to what's called the Good Vibrations March Meet Drag Racing. <laughs> That's right. I, got, I went to the drag races out in Bakersfield. I had an unbelievable time. It was so much fun. The oatmeal stout, or, I'm sorry, the cookies and cream stout, definitely very gassy. It's going to give you the burps. <laughs> so sorry about that. But yeah, it was amazing. I went out to the, uh, the I, it's the F Famosa Raceway in McFarland, which is, if you're coming from LA, it's about 30 miles past Bakersfield. And I got privy to go ahead and be brought into the pit area where they work on the car because um, a friend of mine, uh, she introduced me to uh, her boyfriend, at Dan Paran Racing, okay? And he races the Infinity car, the Infinity plumbing car. If you're familiar with drag racing, you know anything about it. He races, <clears throat> they're both nitro, but he races the funny car and the drag racer, um, the, the, the one with the long, it's like a long truss. And then the wheels are out here. I don't know if you, and then the funny car has the, the top over it, which shoots the fire off the side. <laughs> Man, I don't know how these people do it. I don't know how. Dan Haran, first of all, and his team made me feel so welcome, brought me in, treated me like, you know, uh, like one of the team members. We're just so cool. Just, and, you know, and they got the car right there and they're all working on it really fast and quick. And we're kind of like, oh, yeah, well, let's take some pictures and let's do this. I was with some friends of mine and stuff like that. So, um, just really nice people, really cool. Right up to the starting line, I'm talking to Dan, and he's just really, really friendly guy. So thank you for making me feel like a, like a special day and making my friends feel so good and happy and all that good stuff. And, um, and the, the the crowd there, really cool people, uh, just fun, just coming out for the races. It was it, I've been to NHRA. I used to have this a friend of mine, Giggles. And Giggles would introduce me to his father who worked on all the NHRA cars. Everything from like John Force to all the other big people and stuff. But um, so this was, a, I don't want to say a step below, but like I guess the, the, the level below it. So almost like the minor leagues, if you will. But I don't even know if that's the correct terminology. It doesn't matter. Uh, the cars were phenomenal. The crowd was great. The people came out. And just to see the car go 250 miles plus is insane man i mean and you just like your ears blow out you, you literally got construction plugs and you're you're holding your ears your chest is vibrating and then it just boom it feels like it's going to explode when the car takes off it's exciting it's exhilarating it's like something that you've never felt or seen unless you've been there i mean it's just unbelievable um was able to get right up next to the car probably about I don't know, 40 feet from the car before the starting line. There's like a little fence and you stand there and you can just feel the cars rumbling. Just a really fun, good time. Um, a lot of good old boys, you know, this kind of thing. And uh, just really cool and in free parking. <laughs> really, It's literally like you pull off the, the 99 uh, the freeway or the highway, I don't know what you call it, and then you go through like this crazy almond field, and there's Formosa Raceway or Formosa Speedway, and yeah, congratulations. When I was there, Dan was racing pretty good. He did like a 5.54, and that's like a quarter, I think it's a quarter mile strip in like five, six seconds. I mean, you really have to see this and be there, so Guys, if you ever get a chance to see uh, drag racing, check it out. <laughs> it's just a blast, and it's exciting and fun. All right, I'm getting pumped up. I want to go back. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into the next beer. I got one more thing I want to talk about, and then we'll go ahead and we'll try. Uh, I'll, I'll preview next week's video. How do you like that, huh? Okay, good. Here we go. All right, so this week we are doing a beer. Um, well... It is brewed right here in Los Angeles. 
okay? Um, it is a style of beer from Europe, okay? It is called a Czech Pilsner. And uh, shouts out to Notch. So what's up, Notch? And um, yeah, we're talking about the Angel City Brewery Pilsner. All right. Yay. Right here locally made in Los Angeles down on Alameda Street. Um, it is, wow, it's right down there. I think I should probably go down there and check it out for myself. Um, the brewery, uh, wouldn't it be fun one day if uh, we did weekly beer and video review show from a brewery? Hey, one can only imagine, right? We're just going to keep building this channel. We're just going to keep building every week, every week. Uh, we're just going to keep getting better and more, uh, adding more stuff, just getting better uh, on camera, this kind of thing. And guys, those of you that have been watching me from the beginning or if you just hopped on, I'm going to take this time to say thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. It means everything to me. Um, yeah, so if you would like to see me at a brewery doing the weekly beer and video review show, I'd love to hear from you down in the comments below. But in the meantime, let's try out this canned beer of Angel City right here in Los Angeles. You know I'm a big fan of canned beer but uh, and Pilsners. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give it a try. Well, wow. mm. very nice, very nice. Much different than the cookies and cream. We're back to our original beer taste, if you will, that hoppy kind of malty taste. All right. The Czech Pilsner has got a nice little bite to it. Um, very, very tasty, very cold. Okay. Got to drink these cans when they're cold. Not bad for sip at the Angel City Brewery. I'm going to have to go down there and do an investigation on myself. Did I say myself? I'm definitely feeling it. I'm going to have to do a little investigation on their brewery. Or, well, just sit there and drink. But, guys, I want to talk about this now. Let me know if you, uh, if you think daylight savings time is a good thing. If you're not familiar with daylight savings time, it happens uh, twice a year in America and most states. Okay? It happens... It doesn't happen in Hawaii and Arizona, but it happened here in California. And what it is, is like where we set our clocks either an hour forward or an hour backward. So spring forward, fall back. Spring forward, fall back. All right. By the way, you guys like my shirt? <laughs> you may have seen that guy before. That's little Stevie and me hanging out in Allegheny. All right. So apparently i didn't know this or not but two states don't do this so why does california and all the other states why do they do daylight savings time it goes back to like farming traditions and things like that and, and the reasons were the something along with the spring and fall equinox i'm not a hundred percent sure on it so i don't want to talk like i know what i'm talking about because i really don't but i'd love to hear from you if you can drop some knowledge on me and us please let me know. Let us know. Put it down in the comments below. Why do we have daylight savings time? What if we just didn't do it? How much? What would change? What, what, you know, what, what's the difference of changing an hour uh, twice a year? So I'm very curious about that. Don't know why we have it. Um, but it is, uh, it's very weird because uh, you either gain or lose an hour of sleep. And some people are just so... <laughs> They're so funny, man, in America. They're like, oh, that one extra hour, man. It really needs to take like one day. Like, man, I, I don't feel anything. That's why I'm so curious as to why we even have it. But anyway, let's go ahead and get back into this Angel City. I want to taste it and uh, do some more investigating. Well, that's good. That's really good. I like it. I feel like I could sit back and drink about 10 of these. It's got that real smooth kind of Pilsner taste. Not smooth, milky, and creamy like the cookies and cream. More like smooth like your 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 natural beer taste. Like what you when you think of beer and you think like, oh, I want a nice, cold, refreshing beer. This is what you think of usually. Either a lager or a Pilsner. And um, this Angel City is good. It's also got a little bit of... Um, extra sweetness at the end okay after you've swallowed and you know uh you got like almost like a little backwash coming through or that little like on your lips and and the tongue it's got a sweetness to it that uh that's nice and uh yeah i'm enjoying it i'm definitely enjoying angel city <clears throat> 
Speaking of local Los Angeles, let's talk about the video that's coming out this Wednesday. And that is going to be the Travel Man Dan Show. And I go to this really freaking amazing fun place called Vasquez Rocks. And Vasquez Rocks is um, this place out in Agua Dulce. Or Agua Dulce. Uh, and it is like uh, off the 14 if you're familiar with Los Angeles. And it's all these crazy rock formations that are like bursting out of the ground. And you can climb on some of them. Some of them over 150 feet where the, the rocks are slanted. You can climb up to the top of it. And then it's just all these misplaced rocks that basically got moved when the tectonic plates smashed into each other and threw these jagged rock formations out of the ground. And then again, happened again when the San Andreas Fault kind of gave us this giant, huge earthquake and then moved these rocks even further, either out of the ground this way that way and it's just a cool little hiking area it's a lot of fun it's a good time so if you're here in los angeles and you live here and you're looking for like a day trip you want to go out and hike around that's definitely something to explore or if you're coming into los angeles and you're looking for something to get away from all the, the hollywood tourism and you know going up to the griffith observatory and and just the santa monica pier which are great things to do here and you got to do them all but if you're just looking for like a nice fun casual kind of rest and relaxation while being out in the open you might want to take the ride a little bit north of los angeles and go to this place called vasquez rocks and it's a lot of fun the video is coming out on wednesday and what you're also going to notice about it is you've seen it in over 200 movies and television and um that was kind of the inspiration for me this week while I um while, when I went out there and I was I was, I was editing it, I realized it dawned on me, and I'll get to it later. But I, that's what kind of inspired me to start watching what I'm actually watching. And when we talk about what are you watching, what are you reading, the thing that I'm watching was inspired by this Vasquez Rocks because they filmed there all the time. But they did you know hundreds of movies out there and television shows that were like wild westerns and sitcoms and just kind of space age uh, sci-fi stuff so really cool fun place to go and hike and have a good day but also a really neat and interesting local place that is iconic to the movie industry and that you've probably seen in movies and televisions over the year television shows over the years you just never knew where it was so if you want to go and get a little bit of history on the movies and stuff like that this is a great place check out the video it's coming out wednesday if you can watch it or pass it along that's the best thing for me i would really appreciate that that is um that is a direct call to action you can go ahead and share any one of my videos on your social media it's huge for me so i really appreciate that if you ever do that um that means a lot to me more than you even know because it helps just spread the word and um yeah it just it, it's just how things snowball and get bigger and bigger and uh yeah definitely check that video out it's coming out this wednesday best guys rocks all right, well, let's get into the next little section that we brought in next week, or I'm sorry, last week, and we're going to be doing it. It's called This Day in History. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, I, I, man, I should wear some of my historical hats. <laughs> Let me see if I can't dig something out for next week. But uh, this week in history, today being March 8th, 2020. So let's go ahead and talk about the six events that happened, whether there were significance to history itself, uh, political uh, sports, uh, cultural, like uh, just you know, entertainment, uh, for whatever reason, they, they just were. Now, okay, a lot of you history people out here don't double down and attack to me, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just do this for a fun little segment. I don't, I'm not a history professor, so if I say something wrong, I'll do my best to say it as accurate as possible, but um. Uh, the, the the thing that I will say will be true, but to, to go into it further, I really can't do because I'm not sure of every historical event. All right, so let's get right into it and let's talk about an 1817, 1817, on March 8th, 1817, the stock market was founded. Hey, hey, stock market was founded. Um, so that's pretty cool. That was uh, that was a couple hundred years ago. That's pretty neat. And then let's talk about a hundred years later in 1917, the Russian Revolution against the uh, Tsar was um, started. 
So, which would eventually lead into Russian communism as we know it. But, uh, but like I said, I'm not going to get into it. I'm just letting you know the actual days, what happened here. So that was 1917. So that was, um, you know, you know, over 100 years ago. So pretty interesting. Um, you can go ahead and, and I guess, Google it, dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, look it up, check it out. But uh, that was in 1917. Then let's talk about in 19. 36. 1936, which was, you know, it's ironic that this happened and then the next one happened uh, because I'm talking about being at the racetrack. But in 1936, Daytona opened up in the raceway. The, the raceway that we so famously know as Daytona 500 was, uh, was started, right? So that was 1936 down on the beach town in Florida. I've been to Daytona, I've done the spring break, I've been to the 500. Uh, well, I've never actually been inside the 500. I've been outside of the 500, but uh, 1936, so that's pretty cool. Then, <laughs> hey, where is it, where is it? My favorite car in the world. <laughs> Well, let's see if we can grab it right now. Let's see if we can grab the car. Let's get up in the studio. This is not the actual car, okay? This is not the actual car, but this is of one car. And this one I always keep. This is kind of like, um, you know, how people create their vision boards. This is part of my vision board. Um, in 1969, the Trans Am was introduced by Pontiac. Mm, yeah, so check it out. So I always keep this sucker... Uh, this is the car that I will be getting one day. I don't know when, uh, but I know I'm going to get it. Check it out. I really like it in this deep midnight blue. I really like this uh, eagle on the front. Okay, how bitching is this thing, huh? But in 1969, the Pontiac Company uh, created the Trans Am. It was much different, actually. Um, this one I like a little bit better. That is a 77. That is my favorite car. You might famously remember it from Smoking the Bandit movies with Burt Reynolds. Um, I remember uh, that was probably the first time I had seen that car. Uh, coincidentally, a family member of mine had the original 1969. And uh, it was awesome. It was, uh, 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 what do they call it? <laughs> with no top on it. So uh, we're talking cars. It is a convertible. It was a 1969 but uh, in this day, March 8th, 1969, Pontiac put out the Trans Am. So, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll drink to that. All right, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's got a little bit of strong taste to it, okay? Definitely a hoppier taste of a Pilsner, but equally just as good. Enjoying the Angel City Pilsner. All right. Also, sadly, on this date, in 1999, Joe DiMaggio passed away. So, he was the Yankee great. I thought I'd throw that out there. Um, Joe D, uh, you know, he's, uh, he goes down in, in, in Yankee history as one of the greatest Yankee players ever. I, unfortunately, never actually saw him play, except for I'll see, like, ESPN Classics and stuff like that. I'm not sure how he would do in modern-day baseball, but uh, rest in peace, Joe DiMaggio. And uh, on this day in 1999, Joe DiMaggio passed away. And then, and I want to talk about movie culture. On this day in 1991, the great movie with Wesley Snipes, New Jack City, aired. And New Jack City came out in 1991. That movie was awesome. It still is awesome. It's one of the most classic hip-hop kind of cultural um uh, uh, just amazing movies. You gotta see it. It's uh, they take down the Magna Carta, and uh, it's just a great, great movie. New Jack City. Um, it seems like just yesterday that came out, but it's actually came out in 1991. I was let's see, how old was I? I was a freshman. Yeah, yeah, I was a freshman in high school. So pretty interesting. There it is. All right, this day in history. What's up? Yes, Duff, you know what I'm talking about, dude. We were, we were freshmen back then. Isn't that crazy? It, it may, I might have watched it at your house because we didn't get Cinemax or HBO. I think we got HBO, but yeah, it's, yeah. I, we, remember, 
We used to watch Skinamax at your house. <laughs> We'd wait till your parents went to bed and we watched the crazy movie, the, all the like soft porn movies. First we'd go to Red Apple and then we'd get all those, your brother Sean would always get the Fritos <laughs> or Cheetos. And, uh, and we, yeah, it was good stuff, Duff, man. And then we'd come back, we'd make sure your parents were sleeping and then we'd put on that Skinamax player. <laughs> it was good stuff, man. And Duff's the only one that I knew with a spiral staircase. Woohoo! All right, that's awesome, man. What a great day, man. This is um, this has been one one hell of a day for me personally because I was actually able to talk to three, three of my friends from Kenmore today. Duff, I talked to you. I talked to Brian Little, twin, and I talked to Anthony DeSalvo today. How awesome is that, man? You know, I don't get a chance to talk to my hometown buddies, my the, the guys that I grew up with, especially my North End buddies that we all hung out with pretty much every day. Yes, the best, man. I love it. Um, I, I, I love the guys I grew up with. And, uh, you know, every time I talk to them, it's weird. We all kind of separated and, and, and went our own different ways, as do people, you know, when they're growing up and stuff. So good to talk to you, Duff. I'm so happy. New Jack City. Oh, dude, playing street hockey was the best, man. Now, remember that little street between uh, the Castle's house and the Twins' house? I, for I forget the name, right by Salomon's house. That was like the best little street hockey place ever. Douglas, that was the name of the street, yes. That was, remember when we were all pissed off when they were, um, they were just like, oh, we're going to build a house in that little lot? I don't know what that, it was like a lot. And then they built that house, and it still stands right across from the Little's house, yeah, right there on Douglas. But, um, yeah, good stuff. Joel's doing great. I talk to Joel every once in a while. He opened up a Buffalo-style pizzeria called Bad Pizza, B-A-D-D, -D, Pizza, in Washington, D.C., uh, Northern Virginia area. I think he's got three or four locations. That's a buddy of ours that we grew up with. So, you know, I'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and sip this one for you, Duff. Um, I miss you tons. I hope you and the family are doing well. You're in South Carolina now. I look to come down there and hang out one day, make some videos, all that good stuff. Mmm, <sighs> tasty. Yeah, very good. All right. Delicious Angel City Pilsner. Not bad. It's all gone. Um, am I going to give it a good score? Well, as much as I enjoyed it and I thought it was refreshing... I'm not going to give it a, a, a tremendous score. So I'm going to land it in there at a 7.5. Okay, 7.5. Cheers, Duff. I'm going to give it a 7.5 because Pilsner's, you're going to really have to wow me. You're going to really have to come at me like Labatt Blue, Molson Canadian. You're really going to have to just kind of get me to, you know, really fall in love with you. But, um, but I definitely enjoy this one. Locally brewed here in Los Angeles. It's smooth. It's tasty. You could probably get down about 8 to 10 of them before you start feeling it. But, um, yeah, enjoying it. These are the beers that we did. So we gave a 7.5 to the Angel City. And the Cookies and Cream Stout by Flying Dog, we gave an 8. So those are your two beers for today. Now I want to go ahead and talk about... What are you reading? What are you watching? This is a segment that I like to do. And if you ever want to chime in and tell me what you're reading, put it down in the comments below or what you're watching. Give me some suggestions. Let me know. I'll just make some type of conversation. What I'm reading, I'm reading uh, another play. I am reading the book out of 13 by Shanley. If you don't know John Patrick Shanley, you probably know him as the most famous playwright that he did was called Doubt, which was later made into a movie by Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, but this is what I'm reading now. It's called The Italian American Reconciliation. Okay, he is from the Bronx and he does all these cool like Italian plays and Italian American kind of, you know, uh, goomba kind of wild fun stuff. So really interesting. That's what I'm reading. Um, if you've read this book or play or anything by Shanley, let me know down below. Or if you want to just tell me what you're reading. I like to read movie scripts and plays because it helps me as an actor understand dialogue, understand scripts, how they're written, how they're formatted later for my career as an actor. So that's what I'm reading. 
give me a, give me a, give me a shout out down below what you're doing and what you're reading. I think I'm starting to feel the eight point two. <laughs> you gotta love this, man. I would. Artie Lang has a book, Too Fat to Fish. I think. It, oh, is it? Okay, I'll check it out, man. No, I'll definitely check it out. Too Fat to Fish. Yeah, that sounds about right, right? Um, all right, so what am I watching? That's what we were talking about before. If you watched any bit earlier, or if you're just chiming in, I was talking about that movie location that I'm going to come put, that's going to be this week's episode of Travel Man Dan called Vasquez Rocks. Vasquez Rocks is beautiful, it's awesome, but it's also the famous place where Captain Kirk fights uh, Goron or Boron. I, Goron is it? I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not. That's what I'm watching. That's what I'm here to figure out. I finally ventured into the Star Trek world. <laughs> okay. If you go on uh, Amazon, that's right. Damn straight, Duff. Just a kid from Kenmore. And uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I never, I was always a huge Star Wars fan, but I never got into Star Trek. So I finally saw it on Amazon and I said, you know what? Let me, let me dive into this. I started at the very beginning and I'm watching the, the, the first, uh, episodes of star trek i got through two episodes already um i'm looking for to watch them all you know i want to watch uh the new enterprise and this one at galactica and all this kind of stuff i don't really know what it is so i actually had to go to uh the internet i had to google that shit man <laughs> and uh and i had to find out how the sequence of order of star trek was because i never actually got into it i was always so fixated on uh star wars that i never was interested in star trek so that is what i'm watching let me know if you enjoy Star Trek, I know there's lots of kind of Trekkies out there, people that are, you know, just as much into it as they are into Star Wars. So let me know what the best one is to watch or the order, if you can give me any tips of how to watch it, this kind of thing. You know, Star Wars people are very finicky too. Like, you should watch it like this. And <clears throat> Oh, really? No, well, the thing is, I'm, I'm watching the actual TV series. I'm not watching the movies. <laughs> you guys want to hear a funny story about William Shatner? Now that Duff brings it up, I'll make you laugh. I'll never forget this. It's so funny. So I used to run this nightclub in Hollywood for years. And, uh, you know, we used to do these, a lot of movie rap parties, special events. It's Hollywood, right? It's a huge space, 20,000 square feet, lots of people, 3,000 people. But during the week, we we do these movie rap parties. <laughs> I'm laughing as I you know, laugh. So, so famous people I'd see all the time. I'd always see movie stars and musicians, things like that. They would come in, they would do these rap parties, like when a TV show finished or, a, you know, maybe an Oscar after party type type thing, right? So it's one time we're doing this party. I don't know. I think it might have been like a, hey, what up, flying squid? What's going on? Travel man, damn, baby. Um, so I'm telling this story, right? Okay, hang. It's, so I don't know if it's uh, Seth Rogen's party or whatever, but all these famous people are there, right? Oh, it's really who's who of Hollywood, and I'm out there working, whatever, and I'm kind of like, and it has a big parking lot, right? And then when I'm waiting, like in the parking lot, just kind of looking at the front door, and I see this guy, right? And he's like, he's like slowly walking, but kind of walking fast. I'm I'm no I haven't subbed in a while. I'm gonna be back soon. Okay, I'm I'm working on some creative things. So please tell everyone at school I said hello. Tell them I miss them. Tell them I hope to get to get back in front of you guys and sub your class. But I hope you're doing well. And thank you so much, guys, for for supporting me uh, throughout these years, man. You guys are the best. My kids, the kids that I substituted, the best, the best. All the schools. There's just that, there's no other way to say it. So let me hop back into the other story. So I see this guy running, and I, I, I've noticed him from TV, right? So I go running up to him, like, hey, hey, man, hey, what you, <clears throat> man, I really like your show. I really like your show on HBO. It's funny, you know, it's it's really, oh, thanks, kid. Thanks a lot, you know, and like, you know, I, I, he's like, HBO, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, I really like your show. You're, you're Gary Shandling, aren't you? He's like, what? I'm, <laughs> I'm William fucking Shatner. <laughs> Boom! I call William Shatner. Gary Shandling, I had no idea. I, I It was so funny. I think they look a lot alike. I, I got them mixed up in the whole...
Hollywood thing of it. Um, he wouldn't remember it. I remember it. You know, it's just another day for him. <laughs> but uh, pretty funny stuff, man. Um, yeah, that was that was that was a good moment there. When I, when I, <laughs> Duff, you remember his face? His face was like, what? I'm William fucking Shatner. It was just the funniest thing ever because I th I really thought it was Gary Shandling. And I remember in the mid two thousands or whatever he had that show on HBO. And, oh, good stuff, good stuff. But um, wasn't able to redeem myself with good old William. <laughs> But um, but that's pretty much gonna do it. Uh, now I want to leave you with the quote of the week, and this quote of the week was so funny to me because it was brought to me by one of my, uh, I guess, per people in my community. <laughs> it made me laugh so hard because here's what here, here's what this girl said, and this is brought to me by a girl from Korea named Boram Yoon, and this is the quote of the week. <laughs> she said. Uh, don't let your beer cry in the cupboard. <laughs> Whatever. And basically what this comes about is, you know, if you're going to buy beer, don't let it just sit in the cupboard and just sit there and do anything because it's going to be, it's going to be crying. It's not going to be drank. And it's because this is weekly beer and video review show, I encourage beer drinking. I, I, I think that you should go out there and, you know, as prudish as it is here in America, you have to be 21. But I definitely, uh, you know, encourage you guys. I thought it was just the funniest thing. It goes back on a play of um, the Korean video that I did where I was drinking all Korean beers and she told me that her father had worked for the brewery that I was doing and that he would bring home beer but the parents didn't drink so they would leave the beer in the cupboard and it was crying all alone. <laughs> Just really funny stuff. Duff, you know that wouldn't happen to us as Buffalo boys. You know we like to throw them back and um, you know so if you have some beers, don't let them cry in the cupboard alone. That is the quote of the week brought to us by Boram Yoon. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much. If you guys are just checking me out for the first time. <laughs> and um, I really appreciate it. If you want to check out, this is uh, my little brother and me up on Allegheny shirts. But I do have merch. If you want to check out the merch, go to the link below. It's a Teespring link. You can go over there and check it out. Go ahead and support my channel, but please, if you do, make sure that you DM me. Make sure you, uh, you know, send me some type of message when you're saying or showing me that you go ahead and purchased something. You can buy shirts, hoodies, socks, and a coffee mug. Let me know so I can personally thank you because without you guys, I'm really nothing here on this channel, and I, I appreciate it so much. Um, if you like what I'm doing and you haven't already, go ahead, hit that sub button, ring the bell, give me a like. Pass the video along. Go ahead and throw me a comment. Whatever you got to do. Thank you so much for joining us. Duff, Flying Squid, if you're still with me. I miss you guys. Duff, tell the family I said hi. Um, wishing you the best. Love you guys. Thanks a lot. I'm Danny Slay, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan. And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.